In today's digital world, we take access to maps for granted. Far removed from the limitations of the old paper atlases, our maps detect our current location and follow us around on our smartphones. What might the next step be? Join us at the University of California Santa Barbara Center for Spatial Studies, where we speak with Andrea Balator. A personalized map would be a map tailored to the needs, um, knowledge, and prior experience of a specific individual. Uh, if we think about cartography, the purpose uh, of the field has been the creation of maps for different purposes for large numbers of users. So, for example, we have road maps and navigation charts that support wayfinding. Uh, we have tourist maps that um, highlight tourist attractions. And similarly, we have uh, many different types of maps for urban planning, uh, for scientific visualization, and so on and so forth. The next step for us is to include the individual knowledge that is usually not reflected in current geographic information systems. The idea of a personal map can be traced back to work in cognitive geography in the 1960s, where urban planners and psychologists started to study how people learn, understand, and navigate their environment. From this body of work, we know that there are significant individual differences in how people learn about the geographic space. For example, different people, depending on their cognitive skills um, and abilities and knowledge of the area, would select different landmarks to navigate uh, a city. We believe that in this context of ubiquitous cartography, where maps are everywhere on our smartphones and tablets, they should be able to reflect our individual knowledge of the geographic space, and not only giving us uh, some kind of default option. Customization of digital content is already widespread. When we go online, our experience on any given site is different from that of our neighbor. From the news headlines that are displayed to the ads that line the margins, the content is specifically targeted to interests and preferences we have shown in the past. Personalization of digital maps could be achieved in much the same way, by mining data and user feedback. The result would be a map that is more efficient and relevant to the user. In our framework to personalize maps, we need many different components some of which are already present in other systems and research areas, and some of which are peculiar to cartography and need to be built bottom-up. We identified in particular two approaches that are complementary. One is what we called manual personalization, where the idea is to ask the user about their preferences and their interests and needs, and adapt the map to those needs. So, for example, the user might uh, express an interest in uh, Italian food over Mexican food, and the map can simply reflect a, that preference by highlighting more Italian restaurants. The second approach that we identified is what we call automated personalization. The underlying intuition is that in many cases, users don't know what they want or can't express very clearly what they want. And therefore, we observe their behavior and try to infer their preferences from their behavior in what is often called implicit feedback. There is already some automated personalization happening in products such as Google Maps, where the system monitors our searches and prior behavior, and the map is adapted accordingly. However, we feel that there is a lot more that we can do with personalized maps, not only in a commercial sense, supporting our search for restaurants and stores, but going deeper at our understanding of the geographic world around us. The incredible amount of data to be collected and interpreted in real time presents an enormous computational challenge, but the results could be very rewarding. Find out more in the contributed article, Personalizing Maps, in the December 2015 issue of Communications of the ACM.